And uh, after uh, just resolving a couple of technical issues, we are ready to jump into the action. Here in the matchup between the Bishop Carroll Huskies and the Mo Shannon Valley Gaming Knights, I am Lord Thethan, and I'm uh, uh, bringing you guys the show with none other than Somi Nomi. Uh, we will be, uh, like I said, we'll be jumping right in the action, starting off here on Ilios. And uh, I'm really excited to see uh, what kinds of strategies these teams opt for here in the uh, here in the beautiful streets of uh, Greece. Uh, and, uh, you know, Somi? Map here as well. Oh, yes. Good old well. Yeah. One of the biggest things you got to watch out for is falling into that pit or getting pushed into it by the opponent by the opponents. It's uh it's really a doozy and a bit frustrating to have happen to you. Uh yeah, and you know that's why uh I'm pretty excited to uh, to see No one can hide from my sight.
No one can hide from my sight. of the game. kills that happened there in that play of the game that Josh had uh, an assist for. Uh, so absolutely meaningful. You know, we talk about the uh, attentive support gameplay. The For Josh, it's both attentive and aggressive. We saw them move really furiously onto uh, Austin S there, who was playing Orissa on uh, Ruins. And, uh, you know, they're absolutely getting away with uh, some stuff I wish I could get away with on the Zenyatta. You know, it is... It's really fun to see that Zenyatta is able to put out that sort of pressure that makes a widow scared. Usually it's the other way around. Yeah. I'm I'm normally very careful about snipers. Uh, you know, Zenyatta's uh his head hitbox is so incredibly large. So scoring, you know, the one shot kill onto him uh is uh is really uh, pretty pretty easy. Uh so in in terms of Zenyatta kind of being that bla uh, that glass cannon if you will, uh it's uh it's really fun to see Josh really putting themselves out there and uh, and scoring those uh, those kills. It, you know, if even not for a kill, that's a lot of damage, and that's a great way to build up that defensive transcendence that can really help to bail a, a team out of a bad situation. Indeed it is. I would like to see one thing, though, and I always bring it up just because whenever I see a Pharah, I love to see a Torben response. Just having that extra turret there, being that extra AI of a man... It's so yeah. useful in these fights. Absolutely. We'll be heading into map two now, so maybe we will see a little bit of an adjustment here, maybe a little bit of a closer match. Uh, control point, it's you know it's a glorified team death match. So heading into Escort, I anticipate the Moshan and Valley uh, uh, team to you know just look a little bit stronger against the onslaught of the Bishop Carroll Huskies. We do have a swap coming in here as well. It's going to be Tommy U and Tommy B swapping roles. So Tommy U will be taking up the barrier or the bubbles or the, you know engaging the dive on the tank line while Tommy B goes on.
That is a hero play and a half right there saying, I, I'll die in your place. That's self-sacrifice. You love to see it. All the meantime, however, the uh, Bishop Carroll Huskies, they're actually rolling back this objective. The name of the game here on Escort is to push this car all the way from the beginning of the map to the end. Uh, hopefully with a little bit of time remaining, Moshannon has to find their foothold. You can see the bongos come out. That's going to be a great amount of damage input, but it doesn't seem to be getting the use that they want to have it. In fact, it gets eliminated, and the gaming knights have been pushed back into their own spawn. Yeah, the Huskies are playing really good here, at the very least for uh, for Mo Shannon Valley. You know, what that supercharger from Orissa also does is uh, it, it increases the damage, but more damage means more ultimate charge. It means Teddy is going to be coming up on this tank configuration, that one-shot potential, very soon. Dragon's ready to go. Finding the first pick on the Reinhardt, then the Bastion, thanks to Storm Arrows. Wow. Does come back, but I'm not sure that Hanzo here cares much for it at all. In fact, Annabella, she's, she's just spamming away. Uh, yeah, and there is uh, the uh, Dragon Strike committed by Annabella. It does elicit the Transcendence from Josh on the side of the Huskies, and there's a Counter Dragon Strike. Correct. In fact, Apologies, that was Tommy B that we're seeing here with the picks. We're going to probably find this Bastion once more. Indeed they do, thanks to Kenzie's precise shots on Farah. Yeah, really great connections being made by those uh, direct rockets. It's uh, There's a lot riding on Annabella to be able to clip the wings of that Farah. And there's the revive onto Teddy. Do we see the tank configuration here? Good question. Are they actually able to get this ball? The nano? Wait a minute! Is this the comeback we've been waiting for? Yes! Hopping off with three kills! Finally a breath of fresh air! Can someone take out the Pharaoh? They do! Yes! It's gonna be Austin S on the Roadhog who snips her out of the sky there. Little bit unlucky for Kenzie, but at least they were able to attempt that hero play with the barrage. It's not going to win Bishop Carroll the fight, but because of that close hold, they're able to take an early fight here on first point. Can they sustain now, though, that the pirate ship has been set up? Question here. Right now, the entire team's been shattered. This is oh. terrible! The side of the gaming knights. Wow, that is, I mean, all I see in that kill feed right there are tanks and supports, and that's beautiful to me, and to you as well, Somi. I mean, we've got a support main in me and a tank player in you uh, in, in the booth with us, and uh, and so we love to see uh, just the tanks and the supports, you know, they're, they're just, they're DPS heroes who either have a barrier or who have healing potential, and so that, that, was, that was refreshing. Still a troubling situation established here for the Gaming Night though they weren't able to push quite as far as they wanted here on uh, the escort game mode for route 66 what becomes the strategy to get that 36 meter hold so pretty much you want to try to play this the same as the huskies here uh you want to try to get that close hold that they initially had against them but positionally you need to make sure you're set up to have your angles covered if you're not you may get picked off one by one by Kenzie, by Tommy B. And don't forget Josh. Josh is a menace on his own. Yeah. Maybe a monk, but that Discord orb does plenty of damage. Zenyatta has a voice line that I think is really funny when he when he secures an elimination every once in a while you'll hear him say I feel neither joy nor remorse at this and uh, and it's just kind of funny that is not what Josh is saying Josh wants more bloodshed more of a massacre and it's very easy to attain with that discord orb that's a 25% damage oh. amplification from that ability it absolutely oh. shreds through tango oh, wait we do see a torn pick oh that's what I've okay. been asking for we yes. might be able to get the picks that we need. That extra turret damage does wonders if not taken care of. But oh, Carol like is. is taking care of business right away. It looks like everybody's getting a pick here. And last one alive was the Mercy. Wow, that's a, that's a little bit unfortunate. Definitely good uh, that uh, Austin W was able to stay alive on the Mercy for as long as they were. But the cart is rolling to that finish line. The golden box of victory, it's in line of sight here for Bishop Carroll. Do we get a touch from the Gaming Knights? Don't believe so. The Ryan just could not make it around the corner. And Bishop Carroll takes away the series with the win. 
really good stuff from the Huskies. And, you know, honestly, it's it's not too great of a surprise uh, for me. I think this is the, the recontest uh, that we saw uh, as uh, the Moshannon Valley Knights oh, found their footing. Boy, yeah, the, the, the Nano Shatter. Oh, oh it's beautiful. And, and like I said, ah, that's a team kill with, from, from the tanks and the supports there for Bishop Carroll. I've seen such a shatter in so long. Uh, yeah, you're out here uh, wishing uh, enemy Reinhardts would uh, would drop their shields in in your solo queue comp games. Like, man, I, I I gotta emulate the uh, I gotta emulate Tommy Yu's Reinhardt gameplay. And for me personally, man, I you know Josh has to give me a workshop on that Zenyatta. See how I can pop off uh, with that. I, I mean, the whole team for the Huskies I think played exceptionally well. Uh, ultimately, you know, uh, all of them stand out, and uh, and it's it's really difficult to talk about you know Josh or uh, Tommy. Tommy B or Tommy U all the time. When you've got uh, Olivia, it, it's just kind of quietly pulling the strings behind the back lines and, uh, and Kenzie, of course, on that far. Absolute menace. But don't forget Aiden there. Aiden was the one that made that queen up at the very end of Route 66. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, found the uh, found some pretty crucial hooks, like I mentioned earlier, kind of thinning out the formation for the Mo Shannon Valley Gaming Knights, who do lose this series. A little unfortunate for them, but you know, kind of like what I said yesterday, it's back to the drawing board. Figure out how to enable Teddy on that bastion and withstand as much damage as the opponents are putting out. Right now, Bishop Carroll is really looking competitive now. And you know, uh, I, I was with uh, Joker yesterday. We got to see the uh, Forest Hills Rangers versus Somerset area. Golden Eagles game. We were really excited for that matchup, and I think that there's going to be reasons to be excited for Bishop Carroll versus Forest Hills, but that's in the future, at least for the second series today, uh, going live uh, at probably around 4.30 or so is going to be the Greater Johnstown Trojans versus the Winber Area Ramblers. That is definitely not going to be one to miss, so we're going to head off for a short break, but definitely return around that time. There's more Overwatch action on the other side. Welcome back from the break, everyone. Prepare yourselves to be dazzled, not only by the handsome figure of Somi Nomi as he brings you the action, but also by some Overwatch gameplay here in the TEC High School League Division 1. We'll have our second and final matchup for the day. It's going to be the Winber Area Ramblers versus the Greater Johnstown Trojans. Somi, it was a fun series, uh, albeit a short one that we got to see last uh, or before the break. Uh, heading into this next uh, this next matchup uh what are some expectations that you have i'll say i'm going to do a quick little map prediction here i like to do this from time to time i'm guessing that we're actually going to be seeing lighthouse as we go in here that's my hope at least um i don't think we're going to be seeing any flying characters i think that might have been unique just towards bishop carol i think we'll be seeing a lot more brawl especially if we do get that lighthouse followed up maybe with ruins uh because brawl seems to be the go-to around these parts and I'm not one to complain. We all love some wrecking ball gameplay, uh, especially. Well, well I, I mean, I can't say that Overwatch players. It's a pretty, pretty universal animosity against the rat, as we call him. But uh, you know, here in the uh, high school league, it's not a hero that you see picked too frequently. Uh, so to see teams, you know, opt out of the individual strengths of their players and into, you know, some of those heroes who are relatively higher on that power scaling, it is always such a blast. You know, you. You're, uh, you're talking about uh, map predictions. 
no need to predict too much. It's uh, going to be that same first to two format here. And the first map is going to be Ilios, followed by the same Route 66 we saw before. And then maybe, just maybe, we make it to that mythical map three, heading to Temple of Els. I, I mean, Temple of Anubis for mm. our uh, assault game mode. Uh, it, but honestly, it's tough to tell at this moment if we will be heading to that map three. Uh, uh, Somi, I, I feel like on paper, this matchup is pretty favorable towards one of these teams. You think so? Well, based on from what I've done a little bit of my research before coming in here, I get the feeling that we may see the Ramblers come out on top. That is my prediction here. Yeah, that's the number three seed in the uh, Overwatch standings. And taking a look at their roster here as well for the Winber Ramblers, you have Xander and Andrew on the tank lineup. Ben and Garrett, no surprise, are going to be uh, <laughs> getting all the eliminations. And Veronica and Owen will be on the support lineup. But on the flip side, they can't count out Greater Johnstown Trojans. The Trojans themselves, they're going to be running with I'm Just My Thick and Trick to Death on their tank, River Galaxy, and Cooper on their damage, and finally, to keep everyone alive and healthy, the Doctors themselves, Game, Genix, and Connor. Yeah, uh, Doctors indeed. Uh, maybe uh, uh, doctoring a little bit of damage in there as well for the Trojans. Heading into map one here shortly, we'll get to see if we make it uh, to that map we haven't seen yet here on Ilios, uh, that lighthouse map. Only one way to find out, that's by jumping right into the action. Here for both these teams, uh, dancing in the moonlight, everybody, is not the play of the game. Maybe getting a tan is as we head into the sun, the scenery of Ilios, starting off on ruins. Uh, all of the pillars around the objective, including that sunlight, as well as some crucial lines of sight here. Uh, particularly notable uh, for Garrett and Ben, uh, since we've seen Ben really likes that sniper, the Hanzo. That they do. I'm but sorry, it's Garrett who likes the Hanzo. We're actually seeing Ben on the Junkrat. I believe, mm -hmm. I thought we were going to see Garrett on the Junkrat from my little thing of research. I might have had the two switched. Uh, easy to do when they're all using, you know, those uh, those school accounts uh, here. But, uh, you know, at the very least, we get more of that Hanzo Junkrat gameplay. Um, I do think that the support lineup for Winber is interesting as well. The Brig Mercy. So there's a lot of damage and a lot of sustain as long as uh, as long as uh, Owen really uh, stays alive. For Greater Johnstown, there's a whole lot of damage to contend against, though. Indeed. And actually, this is what you got to watch out from the Trojans. We see the Pharah here. And she's already taken to the skies. Can we see Garrett shut down the Pharah? Or will she just go completely uncontested? I have to see already a brawl breaking out here on the first point as well. I'm just Mythic is able to score that early pick there onto Xander. And there's your man advantage right there. Uh, it's uh, Cooper being brought back uh, by the revive. It is. That Ryan just barely missing the martyr that's dropped by the Junkrat. In fact, Trick is holding the line here, getting pick after pick, followed by Thick with the follow-ups of hooks and punch combos. Yeah, there's some space created. A little bit of respect now has to be maintained on the side of Oh Winter. no! Oh, there nice goes. stick from River Galaxy. Doesn't lead to lethal damage, but hey, that's uh, you can work up towards that next pulse bomb. That it can. In fact, on the side, the Ramblers are still hurt. They're slowly healing themselves up, but. They're just minutes away from being picked up, which is just what River Galaxy does. Absolutely, oh, there's a dragon. Yes, the Mercy did not get out of there in time. Yet, it is traded by Genix, taking down the Reinhardt, who's traded back by the Hanzo. It's a trade fest out here we have. Uh, yeah, there's that glorified death match of uh, control point. Now it's going to be uh, Andrew on the point here, contending against three members. Now two for the uh, for the Greater Johnstown Trojans. Uh, however, uh, does uh, does Wimber retake this objective just off those picks? They do, and as we just saw, the hog on the side of the Ramblers has unfortunately fallen. Mercy looking to get a res, cannot pull it off. Barrage is ready on the side of the Trojans, but they don't need to use it. They're holding it just fine. 
All that's left here is a Reinhardt that needs to be taken care of. Really great patience. Oh, oh wow. that was no. some really great patience from Cooper to hold on to that ult, but they are not going to hold on to it in the process as well. Game Genix ends up committing the Cole Lessons. They might wish that they could have that for the next engagement, but Greater Johnstown has that lead in terms of point progress. Oh, and there's the state ball coming in. Does it find one? It does! It takes out the honor on the side of the Ramblers. That's the, tr the trick here. Shatter ready to go. Will he use it? Might be a solo ult. Here it comes! Finds just the Reinhardt and cleans up what was left of the Ramblers as overtime clocks down. The Trojans take away this first round. Finds just the Reinhardt, but that is uh, that is all you needed uh, there for Greater Johnstown to come out on top of Ruins uh, with an early lead in this map. Uh, I gotta say, uh, you know, uh, oh, interesting. We don't get to see Lighthouse unless we go to a sub map three here. Um, I gotta say, for Greater Johnstown, it's really interesting, right? Because uh, it, normally you look at your tanks to create space so that the damage heroes can go in and score those uh, lethal and significant instances of damage, right? Either wear thin the resources of your opponent or get them out of the fight entirely. I'm just mythic is on the Roadhog, and they're doing a great job at both. Not only demanding space because uh, Roadhog is an incredibly lethal hero, uh, but also scoring picks in the process. Now Winber, in an effort to contest against Cooper on this Farah, have gone to that double hit scan lineup. We won't see the Junk and the Hanzo out here on Well. Goodness, and Soldier, almost first one to fall, is badly hurt. Tracer's all over him, and they do eventually fall the River Galaxy. However, the Ramblers were able to take two picks before nice hook. the hog takes out trick. Unfortunate. Out of care of that pit when you're playing against a Roadhog as he finds Galaxy as well. Might yeah, be the a... Ramblers here that takes the first part of the point. And they're looking to score some uh, some final blows here in order to uh, to get control of that first objective. I gotta say, uh, the, a perfect response here from Winber in, uh, to I'm Just Mythic's Roadhog uh, is uh, is putting Andrew on that same hero uh, so that they can just win the mirror matchup. Uh, it's, uh, it's a stroke of brilliance to me, and it means that the series gets to be a little bit closer. Winber area, uh, Ramblers, they, you know, they're, they're honestly favored in this match. Up. So it's great to see opposition represented by the Trojans. And it is, and we do see the Cassidy finds the flashbang, not able to get the kill directly. Instead, gets taken out by Galaxy. Pulse. Pulse goes in, finds no one, but it did enough damage that Ramblers have to respect the damage coming in. In fact, it seems Ryan's a little baffled at what to do at the moment. But Tracer falls. Accidentally overextending, but not before getting the trade thanks to the Junkrat taking down the Reinhardt. In fact, the Mercy as well! All oh, right. Uh, well, you know, there's uh, there's a mid game adaptation coming through here for Greater Johnstown Trojan One Cooper onto the Junkrat instead of the Farah, able to continue uh, to dish out a ton of damage. Uh, just is going to be less vulnerable uh, because they're on the ground instead of the skies. They are. Galaxy looking to possibly build up their pulse bomb. They're definitely looking to find some value. They do take out the Cassie thanks to Thick. Trojan Tire coming on in. Find oh, the supports. And, and I mean, that has to be the end of the fight there for Winbird. They were able to retake control of the objective. So uh, the cool thing for them is that not only ultimates uh, were expended there for Greater Johnstown, but they weren't gaining any point progress in the meantime. And, and that's a that's a you know a setback that you want to foster here if you are the Winbird Ramblers in an effort to equalize this series. It's the River Galaxy trying to get a pulse off, just missing it, throwing it on the corner. However, they seem to be running circles around this Cassidy here. And there he goes! Wow. First one to throw down in this fight. Winger really at a disadvantage here. But Mythic! Oh my no god! What a boom! And the Shatter comes on in! Can they get the value? They cannot! The trap keeps him in his place, and he's not able to follow up on the Shatter. And right now, the Trojans are pushing back. They are taking the fight back to him and pushing him towards the hallways. That is leading to their spawn. Yeah, that's a really tenuous position to play in here for Winber as well. It means that utilities are a little bit less useful. The uh, lines of sight for damage are a little bit less navigatable. Uh, River Galaxy going down there, though. That's a man advantage. It's time for Winber to push. 
Indeed it is. Both DPS are down on the side of the Trojans, but Shatter is alive and well! I take that back! Curse of the Casters, I'm so sorry! Get out of my way, or I'll... It's just not meant to be, Andrew. And no, at the very least, Wimper will retake control of this objective. Just gotta chase down some of those final eliminations. Dispatch Wimper Galaxy here, stalling out the objective. Do we see it climb to 99? No, it will end up getting captured. And our, oh, is there another touch here from Trickster? No, 97% still good enough. It is. You know, Mercy trying to get the res, does not get it. I think a little preemptive on the choice there, but understandable. You wanted to try to get your tanks up in order to protect that front line. Yeah, I like going for revives as Mercy whenever I feel like I haven't given enough care to that individual. I'm like, here, this is to compensate uh -oh, for that. the tire! Nice tire. Or nice advisor, actually. Indeed, it was able to take it out. Even the High Noon gets value here. But not before we saw the hook. It pulled in the Cassidy, but he was able to take out Mythic. Cassidy right. here is just going to town. Yeah, Ben is really showing off on the Cole Cassidy here, and oh man, just it's it's flash fan after flash fan from them. But hey, if that's how you get kills, that's how you gotta do it. It is, and we're now in the overtime. The Ramblers looking to hold the points, and they seem to be successful. They just gotta clean up the rest of these stragglers that are sticking around on point. Pulse does come out from River Galaxy, not able to take out the Roadhog, but they're looking to take out Baptiste as he deploys his immortality, keeping his team self alive. He makes almost a fatal mistake going after Mercy, who's protected by Cassidy, now looking to take out the Valking Mercy on the side of the Trojans. And the Trojans seem to be making a push here! They find three picks already! Make that four! There's not enough time, and the Trojans take away the first map! That was, uh, I'm, I'm a little lost for words there. That was really impressive. It's uh, it's that age old question. I mentioned this yesterday in yesterday's uh, games, you know, the it's the commitment to strategy from organized uh, competitive teams oh, no. versus, oh, <laughs> good luck. That's point. really unfortunate. I gave him the ult charge. It's, uh, you know, it's that commitment to strategy versus uh, versus mid-game adaptations and, and flexibility. And I think that we really got to see that put on display from Greater Johnstown. They had compositions, they had heroes that they wanted to walk out on. And, and just, you know, it, it was uh, it, it was Cooper uh, swapping off of the Pharah onto the Junkrat, still able to find value. It was, uh, it was Connor and Game Genix uh, able, to, uh, able to know where their resources needed to go as the uh, match went on and uh, of course uh, you know just mythic on this roadhog absolute beast tricks death you know had uh, had a couple of shatters that didn't get capitalized on but is still building those like crazy yes indeed you know i think we're seeing a little bit of march madness here a little bit of the Maybe. upsets what that we've seen in previous years and it seems that we're going to have that story right here possibly it is only the first map so it could be turned right back around here on this escort. Yeah, we'll have to see. We'll be heading into Route 66 for our next map, and uh, you know this is uh, this is also the opportunity for Wimber to start uh, st to start turning the series around here uh, to prevent that uh, that kind of uh, you know underdog story from coming to fruition uh, for uh, the, for the Greater Johnstown Trojans. For the Trojans, uh, you know they really uh, all they really need to do is just continue playing clean, continue staying flexible. Overwatch, uh, Somi, you know this. Uh, uh, you know, being the number number one tank player, NA is um, is is you know being able and ready to swap and demonstrate proficiency on other heroes besides the one you rolled out on is going to be the name of the game here for Johnstown because I think that that's the best response against the commitment to strategy uh, to those DPS heroes, the reliance on Garrett and Ben to score those opening picks to clean up the fight. I think that that's the perfect response that you need to Winber. Indeed, you know. Because we're going to the Escort, the way I've been seeing the meta here with these games is that I think we're going to be seeing another close hold with Brawl. Am I correct in assuming that? I think that you are, and I would honestly love to see it as well. It's, um, you know, the close hold uh, isn't 
even necessarily, it's not an essential strategy here for these teams, but it's a great opportunity to limit test. You know, what can and can't you get away with? What will your opponent let happen to them if you're in the position to do so? And that's, you know, that's part of the reason for that close hold. It's a great way to, you know, be able to earn yourself additional fights in the defending round, uh, as well as to get ultimates uh, as early into the game as possible, uh, you know, generally generate those abilities, maybe score an opening pick, establish a man disadvantage. Uh, but uh, but then again, on top of that, it's a great way to read your opponents, read how they want to uh, how they want to play. Uh, you know, the pace of the game uh, is uh, is typically controlled by the attackers and the way that they want to push onto an objective or into a space. So, you know, for the defenders to come in and really utilize the full map to their advantage, that's always refreshing to see. Indeed. And actually, we do have a sub coming in on the side of the Trojans. Connor is being subbed out for Heavenly EXP, or better known as Heavenly Experience. <laughs> okay, I didn't even read it like that as well. That's uh, that's pretty funny. I definitely expecting some uh, Heavenly Heals here as they opt for the Baptiste. Greater Johnstown rolling out on the attack with this pirate ship comp. I thought that we had seen enough of the Bash ship but River Galaxy is ready and willing to uh, to, to make sure that Winber has as fun a time as possible <laughs> contending against the amount of damage they can do. With that double shield lineup, it means that uh, dislodging that setup off the objective is going to be challenging. The question here, though, as we do see Winber opting for the close hold strategy, is will Greater Johnstown, will they even be able to get set up? That is a good question. I mean, we saw it last time with game one, where you had the Pharah and the Hanzo defending, and they just spammed so much damage that they were not able to push up as attackers in order to give the Bastion what he needed, and he just kept getting deleted every single time. As we see Bastion's almost doing so right again, but he's staying yeah. alive. They're making it's the not the close hold. It's not the close hold here from Winber either. It seems like they kind of bailed out uh, in the use of the lamp in the process. In fact, we do see that Ben is the first to fall. But Garrett's oh. able to avenge him, thanks to those good old Hanzo spans. Ryan's looking to try to get a pin in here, just hits the wall. The hook does find value as they pull in Heavenry Experience, leaving their own Baptiste to finish the kill. They're keeping the Ryan real close and centered, looks to get a charge, but is not able to in just use it. And Roadhog here is just getting value after value, as well as their Hanzo. There we go. Yeah, we got to see so much of Garrett and Ben yesterday, but here as the sun is shining on uh, on Route 66, it's uh, it's Andrew's time in the spotlight. That was marvelous. You know, you talk about how important it is to have frontline pressure from your damage. Uh, no need if all that damage is being delivered by Andrew coming close on this whole hog. But watch out, the tank configuration. Yeah, we've seen the Bastions use this ability before. It does quite a bit of damage, Ow. especially point blank is brutal. One shot, one kill. He even takes out the tire! A saving grace for the side of Winber, but they were not able to get it close enough to the Bastion to detonate it. Yeah, and it looks like uh, Ben is under quite a bit of duress here as well. Do they win the Junkrat 1v1? No! Ultimately going down to Heavenly XP. There's, uh, you know, there's your uh, uh, duality of the support roles, being able to score those kills. Uh, you know, frequent call is, yeah, that's a that's a support hero, right? <laughs> being able to do that much damage. And here's that first point capture here for Greater Johnstown. This is the furthest that we've seen the cart go today here on Route 66. The Martyr! Oh, I just say it's the uh, total mayhem striking down Xander. But these are good. Uh, these are good kills for both sides. It means that Wimber is going to be able to reset and, and take the next fight as a full team. I do have to say, I have to commend the Trojans for their ability to pull off this pirate ship. It is so difficult to set it up and then continue to use it going through point to point. Typically, once it goes down the first time, you don't set it up again. But they are determined and willing to get done just that. Sadly, we do see the Junkrat fall first, but not before trading in a vengeance before falling themselves. That's a supercharger on the objective as well. Things are, uh, you know, things are poised here for Greater Johnson to emerge on top of this. Scoring a kill onto Xander there is pretty influential. Just got to keep your supports alive because Heavenly XP is gone. Mythic is gone as well. This is a stabilization here for Wimber. 
If they don't have to sacrifice ultimates here, that's a very good thing. And you know what? Just as you were mentioning it, it seems Ben might have heard us and said, wait a minute, watch this. And is going to town getting the picks they need. Mine, grenades, you name it. It explodes. They've got another tire here online as well. I mean, for Greater Johnstown, they've got a handful of ultimates, but how do you use them in response to Wimber's DPS, uh, you know, their most powerful abilities? Indeed. You know what? I think we might see an early tire. Instead, we're actually seeing Dragon and full configuration going out on either side. But it seems the most value is coming out thanks to Ben. Despite falling in battle, they did their job and was able to shut down the Bastion. Yeah, you know, we don't have a comms check here in the TEC High School League, but let me give you a sneak preview of what the uh, comms sounded like uh, there from Ben on, on Winber is uh, off the back of my sacrifice, we find victory. You know, falling and uh, still being able to pick out River Galaxy with the total mayhem, those uh, those mines that drop after uh, uh, after he dies. So, uh, you know, Junkrat's getting value here for Winber. Does it continue with a Riptire online? Indeed. Hey, you know what? Something else to point out, both sides have great ult discipline. They're even, four and four. Unfortunately, we do see that uh, Cooper that falls first, but we also see Fen goes in with his own tire, finding both the support line on the side of Trojan. Really, Fen. really good uh, rip tire. It is, Marisa, last one to fall, but does the Junkrat get out? Might. And in fact, we actually see River deciding to go over to the Genji, but wait! Besides, not the Genji, definitely the Reaper. More damage, able to come out thanks to Reaper's shotguns. As we see Tyre come out from Cooper, he's looking to maneuver around the map, finds the Mercy, decides not to go after her. Oh man! I think they were looking for more targets to connect onto, and ultimately just didn't get anything at all. Oh, and there's River Galaxy it's going down. down! It's even right now. Do Big we place. see this Ryan live or will he fall? Seems that the Junkrat and Ryan Trick is getting all the value you need. Cooper and Trick, the dastardly duo they are. Yeah, this is uh, this is great because you know the the amount of time that's been stalled on the second point for Winber uh, is is really well done, well accomplished. But now Greater Johnstown still with a little bit of uh, time remaining in their bank, uh, they're able to find the second point capture. I, I gotta say, you know, you could look at that street space uh, and, and and you know look at River Galaxy on the Bastion. Ooh, nice juke of the hook there, um, and say you know River Galaxy sawed on that Bastion for just a little bit too long, but they swapped at just the perfect time they're looking for blood to shed here oh uh, unfortunately not able to find that hook to dodge but is actually the finishing blow was thanks to the hanzo but not before cooper trades it one back towards the mercy fortunately josh you're not living long today and just as i say that both tanks are trading one another but cooper once again finding more value Oh, River Galaxy striking back. In the meantime, you've got Ben trying to make this jump. It's okay, just play the low ground because you can get River Galaxy. And now strike into the heart, the core of Greater Johnstown. Knock them off the objective, force them back to spawn. That's the name of the game, but still just Mythic is wanting to push this cart. Arex the shield, has the supercharger online. Do we see it deployed as the rest of Greater Johnstown comes back and regroups? They do, they're all grouped up. Windows come out from both sides, trying to see who they can find. But right now, it seems that Garrett is on the full flank, finds two before deploying the dragons to get a third. And right now, a minute left on the clock. They've done all they need to do. Ryan's the last one left in deep trouble, probably not making it out alive. Uh, no, gonna try and pin out, won't quite find it. But, uh, you know, that uh, that first point capture from Greater Johnstown, it, it suited them perfectly because it gives them this last minute to work with. They've got the rip tire. They'll have the shatter, eventually the coalescence, the death blossom. There's a lot that Greater Johnstown has to work with to take this third objective. Will they be able to do it? That's a good question. As we see, they're actually playing a little split. Tire comes out from Cooper. Goes past the Ryan, goes after the Baptiste, not able to make a lethal blow, but enough damage has been dealt. The Ryan has fallen, but I'm not sure that's enough anymore. The DPS are just going to town on the side of the Ramblers, and with them, the tanks are able to push in and make the space that's once theirs. 
God, look at this, Greater Seanstown is still sitting on two ultimates. You're going to be looking at Ben to see if they, I'm sorry, uh, Cooper to see if they can get a touch there. Perfect Galaxy with that up awesome isn't going to be able to use it, however. And there's no additional touch here from Greater Johnstown. They'll have to be satisfied with this push. They will. And you know what? I'm good on them. Good on the Trojans yeah. for making such a push. So much different from what we saw on game one. Not to put down game one, but rather that we're able to see a bit more of that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, this is what you and I talked about. So, I mean, you know, this is kind of the name of the game uh, for both teams is to, you know, stay on their toes a little bit. Uh, definitely for Winber, we saw them, uh, you know, suffer and maybe get caught out by surprise just a little bit by the pirate ship strategy. Uh, Winber had a great adaptation uh, to uh, to thwart that push. And uh, then, you know, when the going got tough, you saw River Galaxy uh, selflessly swap off of the Bastion. Uh, I mean, he's a fun hero to play. And then, uh, and then go on to the uh the reaper here from greater johnstown that's uh, that's the theme they're going to keep that up now you're running a double another double shield comp but it's going to be i'm just mythic on the sigma and that's terrifying honestly per i you have no idea i was just thinking right to myself you know what are the odds that we're going to see diva what are the odds we're going to see a sigma and mythic i swear this man is reading my mind well, they are pretty mythic there, and uh, and maybe have some right. mythical talents as well to put on display on the astrophysicist. He's a he's a powerful tank hero, and I'll tell you, if River Galaxy can find some really meaningful hacks on this Sombra, disable Winber uh, and any one of them from using their abilities, uh, it, it leads to a lot of damage uh, from just mythic. In fact, they do just that. They did get the hack industry off on Ryan. We do see. Oh, take a look at this passion here off on his own in his own world finding the first pick on heavenly experience no one's really contesting him except the reinhardt now and the sombra who have decided he's enough of a threat they need to shut him down but they're not able to no oh man and and garrett ends up going down from the uh, from the trojans as well it's still going to be traded here the close hold will fall for greater johnson it's just a matter of time see what i think the ramblers are doing great here is that they have target focus and that is yes. really crucial in these kind of fights when you're playing the brawl versus double shield yeah absolutely you know it, it's it, and it's not just on a specific targets as well it, it's on to you know uh, it's on to the resources hey get get the immortality field from heaven uh, heavenly xp uh, you know get that out or break the barriers first and then we can pick another target uh, but you know that close hold it rewards greater johnstown with another fight here does and they find mythic once again unfortunately so as we see as well that Ben, is it Ben? No, I'm sorry, it is Garrett who gets the, oh, Ben and Garrett, they are just leading the charge here. If it's not one pick, it's another. And just mowing it down. They're the grass and he's the lawnmower. Watch out, he's cutting through. It's Ben sitting here on the uh, on the objective saying, you know, you guys ran the Bastion, River Galaxy was on that hero, let me show you how it's done. Still, River Galaxy is coming harrowingly close onto that EMP. That's a great no. way to just shut down an entire fight. Trick's death caught out by the dragons! Unlucky! Dude, it was. I don't think he knew that the, Baptiste was right there with the immortality to save him. So he just opted to push forward to take out the Hanzo. As we see Wade gain the first pick oh, on Kuma. No. Followed by second, third, can we find a fourth? We do! Wow. That was what a great tank you? configuration. Wow. Uh, and, and Greater Johnstown, you know, it's a little bit rough for them here because with, uh, you know, just with one or two eliminations, say on to game Gen X right there, it means that Winber is able to push uh, or continue this momentum uh, buildup. Uh, I think Greater Johnstown should actually push on this and commit that EMP. I think we might see just that. We may see the combo of EMP shatter, but can the Rhine live? That's the biggest thing you need there. Unfortunately, it does not, but they have discombobulated them and separated them off the point. See if we can get a touch here for Greater Johnstown, but they're looking worse for wear. Hemorrhaging manpower. Just Mythic still working on that first Gravitic Flux, and uh, they're gonna—they're not gonna be able to build it before they come back from spawn. It's these—it's uh, these kind of individual pickoffs that we're seeing from Wimber really giving them the edge in these fights. Greater Johnstown, you know, kind of like you mentioned, Wimber uh, seemed a little confuzzled there by uh, by the pirate ship. Uh, it seems like Greater Johnstown is in the same boat. They're struggling to find an answer. To to this pirate ship 
Yes, indeed they are. You know, Trick, goodness gracious, you're doing a grand, but I think he's going off a little on his own. However, we do see the flux come in here. This is really good. Could find the picks they need, and they're doing just that. They're getting them. But it's oh not goodness. Johnson. It's not Johnstown. It's Winberg finding the value as the tanks are cleaning it up one by one. And no one's able to touch on the side of the Trojans as Winber wins Route 66. Oh, this is wonderful, Sominomi. It means that we are headed to a map three. We're going to get to see these teams tackle uh, the challenging task of the Assault game mode. It, it is, uh, it, it's universally despised by the Overwatch community for a reason. And, uh, and that's just because it's, it's exceptionally difficult to play in that solo queue ranked experience, uh, at least in organized team play. You know, there are those strategies set in place to award any of these teams victory. We definitely see the Trojans uh, fighting really hard for it, as well as uh, as well as the Winber Ramblers. We'll have to see who ends out uh, or who ends up on top of this matchup. We saw a Winber thrive in the more team-oriented style of the Escort game mode. We saw Greater Johnstown thrive in that glorified deathmatch map, uh, and uh, and you know we didn't see that sub map three. We never went to Lighthouse. So Johnstown swinging it when uh, when the going really mattered. We'll have to uh, you know, and that's uh, heading into this third map. That's a clash of styles. You know, Assault is both a glorified deathmatch as well as fostering team play. Before we jump into that third map, however, we are going to head off for a short break. Stick around. This is the most exciting series we've had all day. You want to see the rest. Welcome back from that short break, everyone. Hopefully you staying hydrated and healthy out there. We've got a healthy series to conclude here, potentially on map three. There's still a chance that we see a draw here in the next map and head into another map, but you know, we'll take that as it comes. For now, it's, uh, it's not us with a difficult task of watching this series unfold. It's the challenge of capturing both points of 2CP and the year of our Lord 2022 between <laughs> the Wimber Ramblers and, <laughs> and the greater Johnstown Trojans. That's my favorite one because this, this map, it's so, it's so steamrolly. You know, you either, uh, it's so easy to get full held on that first point. It's so easy to capture both those objectives, you know, so, so teammates, uh, you know, they start to fray a little Ooh. bit at their edges because this is a, an inherently frustrating game mode. I always like to bring it back to ground my uh, solo queue ranked teammates with, uh, you know, hey, imagine not accomplishing a full hold. You know, imagine not capturing both points. We can do this. We can do this. And that is the sentiment that we are seeing demonstrated by both these teams. Greater Johnstown, they are fighting. They want this win. Winber is demonstrating a great management of how to win that resource game, where Greater Johnstown is really thriving in that deathmatchy style. Who emerges on top of this matchup based on what we've seen, Somi? Well... It's going to be real interesting as we see that the Trojans are actually opting to go for a dive composition. I'm a little hesitant to see the May, but May can be very well abused mm -hmm. in the series because you just CC someone with a freeze, wall them off from their own teammates, and bada bing, bada boom, you got your enemy done real soon. Oh yeah, there's that May wall to actually buy Greater Johnstown the space to get into this quarter onto the Mega, and an early pickoff as well onto Ben. That is truly unfortunate on the side of the Ramblers as they make their way back towards point. Ryan finds himself in trouble, realizes he's been woed, and is deadly afraid as the Pharah takes him out. Lonzo, even trying to find some escape, goes to get the Mega, but ends up on the other end of an icicle. Yeah, that was a devastating attack from the Greater Johnstown Trojans. So you find another pickoff onto Ben here. Maybe, maybe not. There's a Mercy tethered to them until they aren't. It's, uh, Veronica has to get out of there. Uh, well, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll get back to spawn. The cool thing here for Winber is that, uh, you know, Blizzard, uh, the devs have, you know, kind of fixed this game mode. So there's quick respawns here for the Ramblers to get all set up for the next push. It is. 
And now you got to figure out where are they going to rotate. As we see, they are opting to go rotate on the underneath. Do they get the... They do. So they just track it real nice and easily. The freeze comes in. Immortality is on the other side of the wall. So despite it, you're being in the field. If you don't have the direct line of sight, you don't get the value of that immortality to keep you alive. Wow. And, you know, Just Mythic has been demacked here, but the Blizzard is still cast. The tire is out as well for Wimber. Oh, it's absolutely massive! That's a 5k on the tire! That was truly I've got a nothing to say. moment. In fact, the Junkrat, Ben himself, just flabbergasted at what he just pulled off. I've, I've got nothing, Somi. Uh, you, you're going to have to solo cast the rest of the series. I, I have been hey, won't be silenced. Well, let's <laughs> do this. I have been silenced by Ben's uh, astonishing play there. That single-handedly stabilizes this second point hold. What was a losable fight turned into a very won situation. It, it, it. But we do see the Rambers not about getting a little aggressive. Finds the Winston. Winston unknowingly jumps right into the trap and is not able to make full use of that primal. In fact, we've seen the Barrage come in, only able to get a little damage done onto the Roadhog. Bomb, finds two fire! Oh, oh my! Is that again? Is that happen again? Did we just see it a second time? I'm done. I'm leaving the booth. Uh, you guys have a great uh, have a great time. Have a great show. Uh, uh, ben, GG, very well played. <laughs> uh, you know, maybe maybe drop an easy at the end of this game. Don't don't really. You know, we, we we're all about sportsmanship here. But uh, yeah. uh, wow, 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 wow. And part of it is off of that trap that they placed in the corridor. Tricks of death. Uh, you know, goes for the primal. Uh, my favorite call to make when Winston uses his ultimate is that's free ultimate charge, and it gives Ben another 5k tire. That's absolutely insane. In fact, Ben's already a quarter away with his tire at the moment. 75% left to build up. Might find it a little more difficult now that they're playing a bit split. The Trojans realize they cannot be in the same little small spaces as they're using their alts, separating the team that's already separate. And the only ultimate used there was Shatter and Valk. Yeah, and and I mean, you mentioned this on uh, Route 66, but Winber has a really healthy understanding of, of how to play those ultimate cycles. You know, not not use too much, but also not use too little. Um, and, and those ultimates that they're expending, they regenerate so incredibly quickly. Uh, for Greater Johnstown, this is a little bit troubling. They've gotten a little bit stymied here. They have the Blizzard to see if they can bring this fact back, but that's the only ult they've got online. Yes, but it might be just enough. If you're caught in that blizzard, you're pretty much dead in the water. There's not much you can do against it. As we see, it gets invested here. But there seems to be so much ultimate usage on the side of the Rambers, I'm not sure it's going to find the value they want. The bomb gets something here. There's Mythic with two eliminations, but two is not enough. You needed six here for Greater Johnstown, and I think that that's the deficit we're seeing here on Temple of Anubis. Wimber has found a really great rhythm for this defense. They understand kind of when to commit their most powerful abilities, who to commit them into. We saw that while Trick's death was caught in the trap during their primal rage form, and now Greater Johnstown is using ultimates in fights that are already lost so that's the that's the disparity is greater Johnstown needs to orient themselves around that ultimate cycle that we're seeing so well maintained by Wimber. oh well we see I'm calling for three tire. oh no I'm calling oh, for no. three picks two right, we we'll take it we'll take we see two <laughs> But hey, there, I mean, there's there's more off of it, right? The tire gets two, but then the rest of the Rambers come in and clean up. Man, I mean, I, it's as if they took their plays from you, Somi, because you know how to clean up, my friend, and, uh, well, so does Wimber. Indeed they do, as we see them do just that. It seems like it's Garrett and, excuse me for a moment, it's going to be Garrett and Andrew that are finding the, most of the cleanup squad. They see that there's been a mess on IO8, and they have the mop and are sweeping away. Yeah, and, and now that, you know, five-minute uh, time bank that Greater Johnson had to work with after an impeccable first point capture, uh, it's been whittled down to that remaining one minute. Now they have ults coming into this fight. There's an advantage here that can be capitalized on, but they have to do it quick. They do. We hear the Visor come out on the side of the Ramblers, finds one along with Andrew finding another, finds a second one with the Visor. Will we get a third? Not quite. We're actually seeing that Cooper finds a kill with Barrage for falling. 
Resources are still strained here for Greater Johnstown. Ultimately, it's only two people remaining. The, the fade, the get-out-of-jail-free card from Game Gen X has to be used, but they don't use it to cross the distance that they needed to stay safe from Andrew. An absolute menace on the Roadhog, on this tank lineup. Frontline pressure, pick potential, space, They've got it all, and now Greater Johnstown has only the window and the visor to work with. It's a deadly combo, but can they pull it off? River Galaxy needs that last little bit of ult. Well, should we not? The Junkrat trades one another. We're going to actually see a tire here. I am banking that we're going to see another tire, but he does take cover away from the visor. That gets shut down. Bohawk coming out on the side of the Ramblers, finds one, and they're able to keep the Winston off, and you... Not, he's not able to touch at all. There's no one left. Wow. 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 I, I, I say it every time. This is always the highlight of my week to see these high school teams play and to see a series manifest itself as closely as this one has played out is such it, it's a dream come true. Greater Johnstown, like I mentioned earlier, they're really doing well in those individual engagements. There's just a little bit of a win condition that they have to orient themselves around. And that is how do we establish an ultimate side? Uh, you know, how do we establish the attacking rhythm as well as Wimber has uh, has fortified their defending rhythm? Now Wimber has a little bit of momentum coming into this next fight. They're feeling pretty good after full holding that second objective. And here's the thing is I mentioned earlier, we might see that map for it's very doable here for Greater Johnstown. You can draw in this first to two matchup. All you have to do is prevent the attackers, that is Winber here in this round, from capturing 33% of objective progress on that second point. If Greater Johnstown is able to full hold this first objective, even if they give up a little bit of objective progress, they'll still come out on top. So, you know, it, it's any one of three outcomes. They can win, but they can also draw, but they can also lose. And that is not in the agenda for the Greater Johnstown Trojans. Let's see them pull it off with a double shield comp. You've got you've got Cooper on the Bastion. You've got Heavenly XP on the bat. It's time to make it happen. Indeed it is. We do see Ben, cheeky little bugger that he is, go <laughs> in for his little mind trick, trying to see what they have to run against. And I'm not sure if they spot the maid. They're making their way over. Wall comes up, but I think it's taken down accidentally as it initially found no value. They dodged the hook that Andrew throws out, but not much else is going on there. Both sides have split half and half, but most of the damage is going up to that plateau. Hooks the Arisa, not able to find the kill, and first one down is River Galaxy. But we're seeing more picks on the side of the Ramblers finding the value versus the Trojans. And the Trojans are desperately looking to hold this. Uh, yeah, uh, but, uh, you know, the formation has been scattered here for Greater Johnstown. They will end up losing this first objective, uh, and not only to a ton of damage from Winber, uh, both of their DPS, their damage heroes coming up on, once again, that Rip Tire, the Dragon Strike, powerful, powerful abilities, uh, but, uh, uh, but then on top of that, Greater Johnstown, you know, the focus was split. That focus fire that was so uh, demonstrated so well from Winber on Route 66, it is absent here from Greater Johnstown. They didn't have one particular target in Winber that they wanted to move on. They split up, and as soon as you split up on that double shield comp, unless uh, unless you've got ultimates and abilities, it, it, it ends up being useless. It does. Oh, hook does break. Although Andrew was trying to find it, it just moved around a little too fast with that corner. River Galaxy taking back. down Garrett, actually. Tire coming in. Will oh, we no. see it again? One, two, three. Three. That's nutty. That's a great way to start off this fight. It's looking very winnable here for Winber as well. They just have to storm this objective. Get those final blows as well. Trick's death goes down during the hero play of the pin. And Winber comes out on top. We won't see that map for. They want to get back to class. They want to get back home. And they're ready to call it a series. Yeah, I'm not ready to go back to class. Hold on a minute. As we see Ben here. Which side do you think it is? First or second? I mean, both of them were 5Ks. Let's just do them both here. 
Here this we is go. the first one uh, here. And, and you know, if, uh, attentive viewers will see that little 521 there at the top of their screen. And, and I, I got to go back to, uh, again, you know, the rip tires from Ben to not only stabilize the defending uh, Winber Ramblers, but also to uh, to thwart the Trojans in their attack. In, in solo queue ranked, I've brought up that experience a couple of times. Obviously, this is organized uh, team play. Uh, it's uh, it's still, regardless of the scenario you're looking at, it's still so easy to get stuck on an attacking or uh, really mostly on the attacking uh, round. So for Greater Johnstown, you know, it was just as soon as they lose that footing, they're not able to find it. But man... Did they steal the show today? Uh, I mean, uh, just Mythic, Trick's Death, they were phenomenal on uh, on Elios, River Galaxy, and Cooper, not only with the swaps they were making in their hero picks, but also uh, their ability to win those 1v1 situations against the, uh, the, the the lethality that Garrett and Ben on the Rimber, uh, on the uh, Ramblers represent, and, uh, and Connor, and, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Heavenly XP, Connor, and Game Genix all uh, really coming through on the support lineup. This was a really well-deserved win for Winber, uh, but ultimately a great series for the Trojans. Honestly, I couldn't ask for anything more seeing yeah. what both teams were playing, how they were running it. Congratulations to both. Although we had to have a winner, both of them, in their own rights, could have won that map. Yeah, absolutely. Ultimately, you know, it's uh, it's Ben coming through for the uh, for the Ramblers. Veronica and Owen, we didn't get to talk about them too much. And, you know, part of the reason is because they just they weren't dying. You know, they were, I mentioned uh, early in the series that uh, support uh, uptime engagement is uh, so crucial. And they were able to stay engaged in most of those fights. Uh, what a spectacular series, uh, especially for uh, these teams debut to you, Somi Nomi. Uh, any last words for either of these squads? Keep up the good work. Work to yeah. work together. Just keep your head held high because it's only one match. It's not playoffs yet. You still have the whole series ahead of you. Absolutely. And the series will go on both for Overwatch and the other games that we bring you here on twitch.tv slash the esports company. Make sure that you are following so you guys can be notified of when we go live. Uh, starting Monday at 3.30 uh, p.m. EDT, this is going to be the final week of the Valorant regular season. Uh, you know, high school Overwatch is one thing. High school Valorant is something else entirely. So much fun. You definitely want to watch that. Also, use the command exclamation point socials to follow the esports company social. Uh, you know, join the community on all of their platforms so you guys can stay up to date with all the latest updates. And also, you know, show, uh, show Somi Nomi a little bit of love. Use the exclamation point casters command in the chat to follow the casters. You guys can stay updated with all of the opportunities that we get to bring you guys exhilarating Overwatch. Here for today, that is the show, though. Uh, we'll, have to, uh, we'll have to cut it on the day two, uh, the, the, uh, the second of, uh, of a, a, a two-parter this season series. It was an absolute blast, but we'll be back in the booth next week. For now, I've been Lord Thethan, joined in the booth by Somi Nomi. You guys have a spectacular rest of the afternoon. Thank you so much for watching. Be good to each other, and we'll see you next time.